Thank you for that very detailed introduction. <laughs> um, so, yeah, as I uh, was said, I will be talking about Storybook, but also about more uh, the general concept of what Storybook does, uh, which is it helps you build a component library for your framework or your app. Um, in other terms, it's often called a living style guide. Um, so what I'll be talking about, um, well, who am I? Uh, what a component library is, which is what I'll be trying to call it consistently throughout this talk, but it's hard. Um, then, which solution do I pick? Should I create my own? Um, I've got some demos prepared. I hope I have enough time for those, and then I'll uh, uh, finish up with some asking for help. So who am I? Uh, my name is Norbert Salangen, as introduced, and this is how I look. So what is a component library? A component library is often defined as a collection of components that you can organize in a meaningful way. And often you provide some way to organize them and search for them and maybe even change some things around. So that sounds interesting, but why would you want some, such a thing? Well, for onboarding a new developer, this is a very meaningful and valuable tool because it allows you to create an inventory of all the things that you've built. And that means that this person that just joined your team will not be trying to rebuild this tab component again and again. For a product owner, it's also very valuable because they don't have to do lots of clicking through your application to get to that very specific bug state that you previously had. You can just create an instance of your components somewhere in this living style guide or component library. There we go. Um, and you can just show it off. Like, the bug is fixed. I can show you. Without having to do uh, backend calls, all this complex stuff, state management, you can temporarily uh, not do those things. As a core developer that has been on the team like a long time, it's still valuable because it allows you to fix bugs without having to do all this clicking around, uh, setting up the mock backend, stuff like that, which is usually a chore and can create other bugs as well. So this process I usually call isolated component-driven development, where you create your components, like your tab component, your carousel component, you, you build those out of context of the rest of your application. So features of such a system would be viewing components in isolation, um, maybe displaying them with different data coming in, different props for React, um, being able to see which, uh, which functions are being called when you do certain things, like clicking and dragging. It's really nice to be able to change the data in this tool at runtime. Um, of course, you expect hot module reloading for your source code, but also for the variants that you've added. So if you have a carousel with 10 items and one with 20 items, but somehow there's a new functionality come in that tells you if there's 16 items, new functionality must be built. So you add this new variant, and it should just add uh, to the tool automatically. Um, the tool should have some sort of configuration that is suitable for your instance, for your application. Um, and of course, you need some sort of hierarchy because placing all the components uh, on one page can work up to a certain point. But after that, you need some sort of search. And you want to have some markdown documentation alongside of your component so you can actually know how and when to use a component that you built. So there are solutions out there. Um, if you just do a random GitHub search, you will find tons and tons of projects dumped on there. Um, some of them are good. Some of them are like they have one commit, and then nothing happens. Um, and if you do a search for your specific framework, this list grows even more and more. So for React, there's probably a few hundreds of these types of projects out there. 
And to me, this feel, kind of feels like we're reinventing the wheel over and over again. The tool doesn't really change. Maybe some features are dropped, some features are added, but we're creating a tool over and over again that allows us to display components in isolation and play with the data that is passed into this component. So the do-it-yourself approach, yeah, I've seen it happen at a few clients, and it usually ends up with something that is deprecated when they move to a new framework. I've investigated uh, a few of the open source projects that are out there. I kind of give you an overview of some of the things that are, they are good at or not so good at. I really believe that such a tool can be multi-framework supporting. So let's have a look at the do-it-yourself approach and the pros and cons. Well, I like to call this method the opening the can of worms method, because sure, you'll support the framework that you actually use, and it's kind of nice to build a tool in the framework that you're also using, but eventually you end up with AngularJS not being your framework of choice anymore, and now you have to rebuild your app and your tool. But that's not good. And it takes time to get the tool right. I mean, how long has it taken for Babel or Webpack to mature and being actual a really good tool? Well, building your own tool takes time and expertise as well. And you'll end up with lots of ad hoc features that kind of work for you, but you don't really, this is not your business value, so you have to uh, spend your time wisely. And maintenance can be hard. So you need to have smart people working on tools. Sure, you can open source this, but you know, open source works two ways. You can defer work to people working for free on the internet. That's fun. But also, open source people that are using your open source project will ask you to do things. So yeah, it, it's not as easy as, it th as you think, no, usually. So am I saying that you should never build your own tool? No, definitely not. Um, should you be writing your own style guide? Maybe. But the advice that I would give is to definitely experiment and learn. And if your project is going somewhere, sure, make it open source and go for it. But if you're at a client or at your own company and you make, need to make a decision, I think it's much more valuable for you as a company, uh, for you as a developer, and for the, open, for the world in general. If you take an open source project, Determine how much of the feature set matches with your desire, and then try to work with the maintainers to get it to 100% for you. Their 100% uh, is probably your 80%, and then getting it to your 80% will probably solve many of other people's problems as well. So you're really helping not just yourself, but a lot of people along with it. So, the first demo that I've got is from UI Engine. Um, this is a relatively new project that I just learned about a few days ago. Interesting thing that they have is they uh, really are from a documentation point of view. So they start out with Markdown, um, and then you can add pages. And it also shows you all the components that you uh, have. And they have lots of support for different frameworks with an asterisk because they don't really support runtime things. So they support React, but only what you would be rendering server side to a static markup. Um, another really interesting or popular one, at least in the React world, is React Style Guide Dist. Um, so this is a really mature project, and it's really Good, a lot of people are using it, it's well maintained. Um, unfortunately, it renders all the components on one page. So this kind of limits it sometimes for how big a project that you're doing. Um, it, what I do find very interesting in this project is uh, things like this. So it actually has some sort of code editor in here which can just play at, at runtime and it will work, so this gives you a lot of playability with your components. 
And another demo I got is, well, obviously Storybook. So full disclosure, I'm one of the maintainers of Storybook. I really like it. Um, it's, in its words, the UI and development environment that you will love to use. Um, it comes out of the box with no add-ons, but you can easily plug in some add-ons, and you can create your own. It, it works for React, React Native, Vue, Angular, soon Polymer and Web Components and Static HTML, and we're even working on some other ones. Um, I've got kind of a sneak preview also, which is something that I've been experimenting on in, in some of my off time, is uh, sort of a possible next version of Storybook. Um, so some of the features that people have been asking Storybook to implement a lot, um, I've been kind of going off on a leash and just try and implement them. Um, so one of the features people have asked a lot is to have multiple previews at the same time. So here's an example of that working. I can take a component and uh, render it in multiple states. I can make as many of these previews as I want, drag them around. So I can view a single component and uh, view it in multiple uh, viewports at the same time. And this actually works because Storybook renders your component in an iframe, and so the media queries actually work. Uh, in potential, the dev tools for the uh, frameworks, they can work because inside this iframe, there is no other framework but the ones that you are working on. Um, the outer uh, frame, which is something that we call the manager, that is written in React. Um, so if you want to create an add-on, you need to learn some React. So you can help. You as developer um, should convince your business owners, or you as business owners should convince yourselves, I guess, that open source is a, a very important part of our day-to-day -day work. And open source needs support. Um, very often, um, I myself am kind of uncomfortable using a package or an open source project because I feel if it becomes unmaintained, this will hold me back in a later stage. And I think the solution to that is not to build your own, but to come become a co-maintainer. This can be daunting very, very much at first, but, you know, um, I made the jump at some point to start maintaining an open source project, and uh, it's been a hell of fun. So, uh, in my experience, it's very welcoming space, and yeah, uh, if you feel like a project that you understand is on GitHub, um, why not support it, either financially or with work? So, with that in mind, I've got a storybook that, if you like it, you can either uh, help on GitHub or on our open collective. So. That's it, that's what I got.